What's with all these late in the week court rulings? Ain't you ever heard of deadlines? Hey everybody, it's Reporters Roundtable. I'm David Cruz. Our panel of journalists, all of them on deadline, include Dustin Rassiopi, editor for Politico NJ, Brent Johnson, politics reporter for NJ Advanced Media, and Fred Snowflack, columnist for Insider NJ. We'll hear from the panel in just a few minutes, but let's start today with a status check on all the big issues that are roiling the political landscape. Uh, lawsuits and countersuits and big votes and countersuits. Uh, let's bring in some order to this chaos with a guy who's known for his straight talk. He's the Republican Senate Budget Officer. Declan O'Scanlan joins us. Senator, welcome back. David, thank you for having me. I, I appreciate being known as a straight talker, but uh, bringing order to chaos has not been something I've, uh, right. I've been known for. I usually go the other way. I said we're going to try. <laughs> so, okay, earth-shaking developments, literally, over the past uh, two weeks. As we gather today, uh, appeals being heard on several fronts. Uh, are you a party line guy, or do you think that office block ballots look okay to you? I think we're going to be okay either way, but I think that uh, some form of a line done right uh, could be a good thing. And I think that it may be a, a good idea for the legislature to look at this and statutorily memorialize uh, and institute a standard process. There are plenty of chairmen who abuse their power, and, and it's really an undemocratic process. There are chairmen like mine in Monmouth County, Sean Golden, uh, and our clerk, Christine Hamlin, leaders of our party here, we do it right here. There's a real democratic process with, with secret ballots, uh, with using machines. Uh, and just, I don't have to go any further than this year. Someone who might not have been the chairman's first choice won the line in Monmouth County. So we've got a good process. So the rest of the state, as usual, may be able to learn from us. Uh, so I think that might be the right way to go. You say statutorily memorializing and legislature in the same sentence, and and people get nervous about that. But um, all right, what happens, uh, do you think, if the line goes away? How, how does that affect uh, organizations, Democratic, Republican, whichever? Well, look, it definitely will weaken the, the party structure, no question, if that happens. Uh, but it will still exist. Uh, people do, they've come to rely on parties to vet candidates, uh, and they, you know, generally, I have done an okay job doing that. Uh, it's the, the people are heard one way or another. Uh, if the line goes away, we'll figure it out. I mean, we've uh, we have survived other earth-shaking events, and we'll be okay. Uh, those of us with a voice, willing to do the hard work, willing to raise and spend the money, uh, we'll get our voices out there. You hope that uh, we don't end up with uh, a system that. It's just chaos, and I don't think we will, but that's possible. We've never, we've never gone down this path before. Uh, but again, I think the, the legislature might step in and, and might get it right. And, that, and I say might because we're not sure yet uh, on both of those counts. All right, so this Oprah reform bill, I'm using air quotes right now, uh, tabled this week, right? The GOP leader, however, has signed on as a, a co-sponsor. So many people saying this is a bad bill. I mean, it's not dead, I guess, right? Uh, it's not dead. And, and I don't think we're getting it right at this point. Uh, I think that the, the right thing when it was first brought up would have been go back to the drawing board and really include stakeholders, not what I believe has been kind of a faux attempt to suggest that stakeholders have been at the table. Uh, look, let me say this. Oprah needs reform. It, it is kind of a mess right now. Uh, so those people fighting reform, and I've been advocating some reform for years, those who fought reform at, uh, at every level over the past six, eight years uh, have led us to this point. What we should have done was reform it gradually as, as we've gone along. But now we're at a point where uh, the folks who really don't like Oprah and some people that really understand it needs reform have just kind of signed on to something. Uh, I, it's not a good place. Uh, I would go right back to the drawing board. We're not in a big rush. Uh, take our time, genuinely include stakeholders, and end up with something that makes no one perfectly happy. Uh, that would be a good idea. 
So let's talk budget. You're the budget officer. Um, this new budget is basically $20 billion, uh, $20 billion larger than Chris Christie's final budget. I'm sure you probably already know that. Uh, has the cost of government really risen $20 billion in less than a decade? In the minds of Democrats leading New Jersey and the governor, yes, apparently it has. But it's outrageous. And it's a house of cards. Let me, let me state that clearly. Uh, it's a mess, this budget. Uh, and we've squandered a golden opportunity over the last five, six years to fix our budget. And we have real opportunities to do so, and which will never have again. Uh, it's a house of cards. Uh, and I will uh, I, uh, shout out to, to my friends in the press, uh, giving the administration somewhat of a pass, uh, saying, repeating their line that they're only spending down $2 billion of surplus. We have a $4 billion structural deficit in this budget. There's $2 billion of surplus. There's the billion that's being raised by the CBT that's not going to transit that supposedly will next year. So that gets you to $3 billion right there. And it's easily another another billion. They're, they're siphoning off a half a billion in debt defeasance money. Uh, our, our family leave and temporary disability uh, yeah. accounts are being spent down a half billion. It is a house of cards. It is You're disgraceful. Leaving you're leading me to my question as I'm running out of time. Um, let me get Brent in here, who has a, a question that refers right to what you were talking about. Brent, you got a question. Hey, yeah, Brent, so, how are you? Uh, hi, good. How are you, Declan? So the, 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 the big question this time of the year is always, how are we heading for a state shutdown uh, this year over the budget? Uh, no. The, the uh, governor and the uh, Democrats will hold hands, sing Kumbaya, and then jump, taking all us with them uh, off the next fiscal cliff that they're leading us to. Uh, so there won't be a shutdown. And they'll build back in, by the way, much of that billion dollars the governor claimed to cut from the budget in pork. Uh, so uh, I, I think I can safely make that prediction. Since Republican predictions about this about our budget have come true every year over the past half dozen, at least. All right. Politics now. Jack Cittarelli announcing for governor. Um, you got Brian Mick in the race already. I think we saw you at the Cittarelli event. Uh, you've uh, ruled yourself out as a gubernatorial candidate, and many people agreed. Um, but you got two guys <laughs> <laughs> occupying similar ideological ground. Are they just going to split the moderate votes and leave the nomination for some wacko? <laughs> well, I'm not going to term anyone a wacko, but... I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Look, it, Those it are says... my words. It says very good things about the Republican bench that we have two great guys already announced. I'm backing Jack Chiarelli, but I adore uh, John Bramlick as well. They're very good friends, uh, good guys. Either one would make a, a great guy, and I'm backing Jack. Uh, so the Republicans are, are offering great choices to the voters of New Jersey. Uh, it really is uh, warms my heart that I didn't have to step in uh, because they're better people than me at the table right now. Uh, so it's, it's, it's we're in a really good place on the Republican side of this uh, this debate. All right. In the in the 45 seconds or so that I have left with you, tell me something about NJ Transit fair hikes. Uh, look, it's uh, you, you got to run the system, but we're leave, leaving a huge hole. To, and, and that's part of the overall arcing budget discussion. Uh, we've got a billion dollar hole in New Jersey Transit's budget that isn't going to be filled by fair hikes, and it wouldn't be fair to fill, uh, fill with fair hikes. Uh, that, that this governor hasn't dealt with that effectively uh, in, during his entire term is a ticking, another part of the ticking time bomb that is our entire budget. Uh, it's, it's a real problem. And again, we had the opportunity to solve all of this over this past few years. We were flush with cash. We had time. Uh, it really is a sad thing, this house of cards that we will be dealing with. Uh, over the next few years. And All right, but at least no shutdown. Solutions. At least no shutdown, no shutdown right? On, no no shutdown. We're not going to have a government shutdown. Uh, All right. Again, the, the Democrats have some, still some, some uh, leeway here, so they will kick the can down the road one more year. All right, Republican Senator Declan O'Scanlan, good to see you, man. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Anytime. All right, panel, Messrs. Rassiopi, Snowflack, and Johnson. That sounds like a law firm. Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, let's start with the line lawsuit. As we speak here on Friday, the rest of the press corps is in Philly for the appeal of the order to tear down the line 
in the uh, Andy Kim suit. Uh, we're not going to know by the end of the show today. But, Dustin, is the world really going to change that much if the line goes away? I doubt it. I mean, voting really isn't as hard as a lot of people, including Governor Murphy, would have you believe. Yeah. Um, the ballot design uh, for office blocks is used in 49 other states, and they seem to have managed um, to get by. I think New Jersey can do the same if, yeah. if that's what the ruling is. Fred, uh, it's getting hard to follow who's appealing what, where and why. Uh, amicus briefs coming out of everywhere. Uh, is it a big deal? No, I think it's, I agree with what Dustin said. It may not be a big deal for average voters, but it is a big deal for professional politicians and yeah. county leaders and the like who basically have, have appealed. And even on the Republican side, you know, as we know that at the moment it does not affect Republicans and some Republicans want to change that, others want to keep it. I think that Let's face it, county leaders like the power that they have. People on county committees like the power that they have to endorse candidates. Yeah. I think that's what people are not going to be happy to give that up. Brent, the governor said on Nancy Solomon's show on WNYC that the whole line thing was overblown. He called it a fly speck, which Webster defines as a tiny stain left by the excrement of an insect. That's news to me, actually. Uh, it also annoyed him that people tried to tie the demise of Tammy Murphy's campaign to the county line issue. Uh, weren't they tied? Yeah, I mean, the, the question is whether she herself said that I'm I'm dropping out because of the line. But right. there was certainly talk about the line was in the atmosphere all over the place. Sources told me county leaders were worried about it. So it was definitely in the water. Uh, uh, when she made that decision, whether it was the material thing for her that, you know, she says it wasn't, you know, but other people, you know, say it, it was all over the place. But yeah, I mean, I, just a monumental time in NJ politics where a lot is going on at a granular level. And, you know, there may be people who don't understand uh, exactly what we're talking about or how big of a deal it is, but this is going to continue to play out in the months and or weeks and months to come. Yeah. Dustin, uh, was it a fly spec or, or was it more than that, that uh, the association between the line uh, dissolving and Tammy Murphy's campaign likewise dissolving? It was the whole ball game. Like, I agree with everything that Brent just said. He, he encapsulated it pretty perfectly. Yeah. But the backlash to Tammy Murphy was all about the line and a a sense of entitlement among critics on yeah. her and, and the governor's part. And it just strikes me as incredibly tenured for the governor to dismiss that. Um, and it seems like they didn't learn any lesson from Tammy Murphy's Senate run. Yeah. Fred, it, it seemed like it really got the entire conversation about the line uh, superheated. No, absolutely. I mean, the issues are related because they overlap. I mean, the gripe by a lot of rank and file Democrats against Tammy Murphy was that she was the candidate of the establishment and she was being endorsed by county leaders. But of course, the way county leaders execute that endorsement, if you will, is through the county line. So obviously, the issues are related. And I don't think it was a fly spec at all. I think Tammy Murphy's candidacy gave oxygen more oxygen to the campaign to get rid of the line, at least among rank and file Democrats. Yeah, and I would venture to say that if, you know, all things being totally different, if Menendez were seeking re-election again without all of these indictments, we might not have the same noise uh, surrounding the party line, I think. Anyway, uh, moving on. We were all four at the Chitterelli announcement this week, Fred. Uh, let's stick with you here. Pretty big crowd. I saw you hobnobbing with the GOT big shops. Well, yeah, it was. It was a, it was probably a, it was a place was jammed. I mean, you know, the room, it was like a few hundred people were there. And the other people I talked to, I mentioned something that you had mentioned previously about Jack and John Bramnick basically drawing from the same crowd of people, the same yeah. crowd of voters. And at least this is the Chitterelli group. And they they told me, they, they said they figured, well, 
A, Jack has run a few times, which may be a bad thing, but they're framing it as a good thing, meaning he has an infrastructure. He has name recognition among Republicans. And the view was that Bramnick is actually, they're both could be moderates, but maybe Bramnick is more moderate or more to the left than Jack is, and that, Jack, and that Bramnick is not really going to get that much support among Republican primary voters. Yeah. Dustin, I saw... Uh, more black people at this event than I've ever seen for a Republican. Could that mean something? I don't think that there's a very large uh, black Republican constituency in New Jersey, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen any data on that. It's a good anecdotal sign, I suppose, for, for Jack that he's got some sort of crossover appeal. And that's kind of what he's uh, pitching himself as, right. as somebody who can meet the not only the Republican base, but meet the unaffiliated and the Democratic voters who are maybe upset with or want some change from the Democratic Party after, yeah. you know, Governor Murphy or having a full Democratic legislature. Um, and typically, you know, black voters uh, are mostly Democratic. So if he can peel off some of those, um, that would help him in a general election. But you, you you need them to register as Republicans for the primary. Right. Brent, you had the question of the week at the Cittarelli uh, uh, presser after, uh, and it's changed the narrative of the race already. Let's take a listen. So I went back in my notes from a few years ago, and I had your name pronounced Cittarelli, or is it Cittarelli? I want to make sure I get it right this time. Well, in my hometown of Raritan Borough, where my grandparents immigrated, um, last name is pronounced Cittarelli, Cittarelli, and we're known as Chet, short for Cittarelli. Our nickname is Chet. So, so that's how you pronounce it, like when you introduce yourself to people, it's Cheddarelli? So, Brent, are you asking me how it is I pronounce my last name? Yes, that's a better are way of asking Are you asking me yeah. how you should pronounce my last name? So Both. think, think <laughs> Chet, Chet for Cheddarelli. Okay. C-H-E-T, if you're going to do it phonetically. You prefer that we call you uh, Cheddarelli? Well, I prefer you call me in 18 months, David, Governor. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want Jack to call you Jack. But after we win, you'll have to do that once, and then after that, you'll call me Jack. You were hustling around that ballroom. Um, what did you hear or see that was of interest other than it's Cheddarelli, not Cittarelli? I mean, as all, as uh, I'm glad I could ask the, the really pressing questions, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, the, 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 everything, you know, everything as in the world of politics everywhere right now is the question is Trump. It will, uh, will, will someone who has you know, uh, criticized Trump in the past, but now endorsed Trump. Will that give him a lane? Will John Bramnick even have a shot to win the, the primary because he's anti-Trump? Will there will someone like Bill Spady, who's very pro-Trump, you know, take over the party? I mean, that, that's that's the thing I kept hearing. And so, uh, you know, we 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 uh, we have a presidential election to decide before the primary next year. But that's clearly on the minds of voters and you know pundits as we go into this primary. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on to Oprah. Uh, the Bill, not the talk show host. Uh, is it dead or, or, or what, Dustin? Um, I couldn't declare it dead, but it seems like it's on life support given the delays that, that we're seeing. And again, a, a sustained uh, backlash to it. Um, it seems like lawmakers are getting the message that people don't like it. You know, there was an FDU poll that came out today that 80% of registered voters uh, don't like it. And as Senator O'Scanlan said, um, some reform is necessary because Oprah is a disaster right now. And uh, there are plenty of examples to show why that is. So if lawmakers could flip to the other side and actually address the problems um, instead of trying to tighten the restrictions, I think that would be welcomed by most of the people who are um, raging against it right now. Yeah. Uh, Fred, do we know who these stakeholders are that lawmakers say that they're consulting with? And is it like the last time they consulted basically a one way street? Well, some of the stakeholders would be people like ourselves, would be the press and the media. Those are obviously those are very significant stakeholders. And also, if you look at many of the groups that were complaining about at the legislative hearings that were jam packed and which lasted a long time, and there were groups there. There were a lot of groups on the left, but there were also groups on the right. I mean, just about any every special interest group that does business with the government in Trenton wants access to information. So, I mean, yeah, the, 
just about just about any public interest group or stakeholders, and the press, of course. Does. Dustin, on to this uh, Menendez case. Uh, the judge separated out Mrs. Menendez, uh, but kept the senator's timeline. Yes, what what does it all mean? It means uh, the the small opportunity that Bob Menendez may think he has to run for re-election as an independent um, remains. Uh, yeah. He probably wouldn't have had much of a chance had it been delayed. So uh, his lawyers advocated for keeping his timeline. Um, he feels like he can get exonerated, in his words, um, after this trial and then run for um run for re-election as an independent, and that would be just a, a wild turn of events. Um, so, you know, I guess it's good news for him, but um, for the rest of us, we're going to have back-to-back -back trials to deal with. <laughs> Fred, um, GOP Senate race now. You've got a, a an election denier in there now. Yes, we do. I mean, it's Christian Serrano of Lester, who's the mayor of Mendham Borough, which doesn't really sound like a great launching pad for statewide office, but it <laughs> is what think. it is. Hmm? You yeah, wouldn't think. It is, yeah, it is what it is. But, I mean, I think that, I mean, she did say in debate that she would not have certified the election. And uh, that, that may appeal to the Trump base in the Republican Party. But then again, I don't think it appeals to everybody. And it certainly would not appeal to people in the general election if she gets that far. And she kind of forced... Uh, Bashaw into uh, kind of saying, yeah, I'll endorse Trump. Yeah? Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Time for our Only in Jersey segment, headlines and notes that are quintessentially Jersey. Brent, you got one? Yeah, well, I, um, some people might know, I play in a band called the Clydes, and uh, we're from New Brunswick. And one of our very favorite venues, uh, the Court Tavern in New Brunswick, which is one of the greatest places to play music in New Jersey, has officially gone away and is uh is going to be replaced by vegan restaurant nothing against vegan restaurants but this was uh at its height it was a place where you could cram 100 people into a room and hear great rock and roll and uh, now it's gone and uh, there's very few places now outside of asbury park or or uh jersey city to see live music and i just hope people go out and support the state has a great music scene but we'll miss the court nice who is that playing guitar is that you that's me in the middle i mean you know uh, yeah. Look at it's, this uh, guy. All right. Nice. I love life. Nice. Dustin, you got one? Uh, yes. The the comedy cartoon show Family Guy on Wednesday night dedicated a whole episode to uh, Chris Christie. Um, it was a, a weird plot about uh, Brad Pitt playing Chris Christie in a biopic. Oh, my gosh. And I'm not... Uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, okaying fat jokes. I think they're not very good, but it was really just a device uh, to to lampoon Hollywood culture, which I think is probably something that Christie would get a little bit of a chuckle out. I think the guy from King of Queens is an obvious choice to play Chris Christie in any <laughs> biopic. But the idea of a Chris Christie biopic is a whole other concept for us to deal with, perhaps on right. another show. <laughs> Mine comes from Patterson, where an ordinance would require anyone who provides services to the homeless to take out a permit or face steep fines, even jail time. The city says the people there leave a mess, and uh, who knows about the safety and quality of the food they receive? I mean, dealing with people in crisis is messy work, literally and figuratively. And sometimes you got to go where the people in most need are. But critics suggest the ordinance is a thinly veiled attempt to, as they used to say, clean up the streets. But that is so 1970s. Instead of trying to clear the sidewalk, the city should focus attention on these areas and deploy whatever resources are needed to do the work that obviously is very much needed. You can't wave the flag for emergency humanitarian aid overseas and then treat the refugees in our midst like they should just be disappeared. Fortunately, the ordinance was pulled from the agenda but could still be reintroduced. In 2024, Patterson, once the world capital of ingenuity, needs to do much better. And that's Roundtable for this week. Dustin, Fred, 
Brent, good to see you all. Thanks also to Declan O'Scanlan for joining us. You can follow the show on X and dig into the Roundtable archives, including full episodes when you scan the QR code on your screen. I'm David Cruz for the entire crew here at Gateway Center in downtown Newark. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Major funding for Reporters Roundtable with David Cruz is provided by RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Rowan University, educating New Jersey leaders, partnering with New Jersey businesses, transforming New Jersey's future. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Business Magazine, the magazine of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, reporting to executive and legislative leaders in all 21 counties of the Garden State since 1954. And by Politico's New Jersey Playbook, a topical newsletter on Garden State politics, online at politico.com.